Isn't it crazy that an AI app has grown faster than TikTok? ChatGPT has been the hottest tech topic since it was launched in November last year. It has gained 1 million users in under a week and reached 100 million users in two months, making it the fastest growing app in history. In comparison, the other most popular app, TikTok, took nine months to reach 100 million users. Just think about it. Isn't it crazy? How does ChatGPT become so popular and successful? What's the story behind its parent company, OpenAI? I'm personally very interested in the story of OpenAI and interested in understanding how it becomes the most popular and highly valued AI startup. So today, let's talk about OpenAI. There are two phases in OpenAI's history. Let's call the first phase the start of a nonprofit. The story of OpenAI starts with Sam Altman. Sam was a computer nerd, a Stanford dropout, and a startup founder and CEO of Looped when he was 19 years old. Uh, I'm Sam Altman. Nine years ago, I was a Stanford student, and then I dropped out to start a company, uh, and then I've been an investor for the last few. He met the founders of Y Combinator, and immediately felt like he has found his people and he wants to be surrounded by those people. The company joined Y Combinator and was later acquired for $43 million. Then in 2014, when he was 29 years old, he became the president of Y Combinator. If you don't know about Y Combinator, it's one of the most popular VCs in Silicon Valley. In 2015, Sam noticed that the deep neural networks started to work and it scales with more computing resources, meaning that the more compute you provide to AI, the better it works. At the time, AI only works with specific tasks like categorizing images. That's when Sam started to dream about artificial general intelligence, AGI, a human level AI, a system that can learn and self-improve and create and reason about new information. Basically, the collective knowledge of creativity and humility in one system. At the time, Greg Brockman, former CTO of Stripe, also had an idea of creating an AI startup, and it was introduced to Sam through a friend. Two of them instantly hit it off in the first meeting. Two months later, Sam hosted a dinner party with some of the biggest names in tech, including Elon Musk, Greg, and Eliva Suskiver. Sam and Elon had a vision of building safe AI that could benefit humanity. To ensure that AI was beneficial and not competing with other incentives, they decided to build a nonprofit. A few months later, in December 2015, they announced the birth of OpenAI. In the announcement, they said, our aim is to build value for everyone rather than shareholders. Researchers will be strongly encouraged to publish their work and our patents will be shared with the world. This was a groundbreaking move as it challenged the traditional model for for-profit companies and put the focus on a common goal of creating a safe and beneficial AI. And founders committed $1 billion to OpenAI. That's how OpenAI was born. With $1 billion and a world-class team of researchers, everyone was excited and ready to work towards AGI. However, things weren't as easy as they seemed. The first few years of OpenAI were marked by confusion and uncertainties. People knew that we, they were working towards AGI, but they didn't actually know what they were doing. Everyone thought that with the resources and talent at their disposal, OpenAI would be making breakthrough after breakthrough, but that wasn't the case. In April 2016, OpenAI released OpenAI Gym, a platform for reinforcement learning research. In December 2016, OpenAI released Universe, a software platform for measuring and training an AI's general intelligence. I actually didn't know either of them before I did my research for this video. Most people probably don't know about them either. By March 2017, leadership realized that it was time for more focus. They also realized staying in nonprofit was financially untenable. The amount of money they need is beyond what they could raise as a nonprofit organization. Just for reference, in 2017, OpenAI spent $7.9 million in cloud computing, and in comparison, DeepMind's expenses in 2017 were $442 million. In order to stay relevant, 
they would need to dip into the power of capitalism. They had no choice but to transition from nonprofit to profit. So in March 2019, OpenAI officially announced its transition from nonprofit to for profit. Side note: In 2018, Elon Musk announced he was parting ways with the company over disagreements about its direction. Some news say that Elon left to avoid a conflict of interest when he poached Andre to work for him as the director of AI at Tesla. Elon Musk tweeted in 2020 that OpenAI should be open, in my opinion. So OpenAI has become a for-profit company with a profit cap. They're capping their investors' profit at 100 times their investment. You might think, "Wow, that's crazy! Why do they do that?" Well, according to OpenAI, capped profit will allow us to rapidly increase our investment in computing and talent, while including checks and balances to actualize our mission. And soon after, Sam Altman became the CEO of OpenAI. And a few months later, OpenAI received one billion investment from Microsoft, which officially put them on the path to becoming a groundbreaking AI research organization. In 2019, a team of five OpenAI curated bots called OpenAI 5 defeated OG, the world's champions of the game Dota 2, and not just that, they played over 42,000 games in a four-day open online competition and won 99.4 percent of them. This was huge because it was hard, and no one thought that it was possible in the realm of reinforcement learning. With Dota, you can choose thousands of steps for each action step. The complexity and the action space of this game are beyond imagination. But Dota 2 was just a small part of OpenAI's achievement. Their biggest achievements are in their image generation and language generation models. In 2021, OpenAI introduced Dell E, a deep learning model that can generate images from text descriptions. In 2022, Dell E2 was introduced with greater comprehension and new capabilities like editing and retouching photos. This technology shows the immense potential of AI. I'm super impressed with the images generated. OpenAI's famous GPT language model dated back to 2018, when OpenAI introduced GPT-1 with 117 million parameters. And in 2019, OpenAI announced the first stage of GPT-2 with 124 million parameters. GPT-2 made waves in the public eye. It got a lot of attention and also criticism. People think the model is not good enough, and they are very concerned about the misuse of this language model. But OpenAI kept improving the model, and six months later, they released a new 774 million parameter model. And then three months after that, they came out with the final model that had 1.5 billion parameters. And just when we thought it couldn't get any better, in 2020, they announced GPT-3 with 175 billion parameters. That's just mind blowing. And then they launched ChatGPT, which was based on GPT-3.5, and now everyone knows about ChatGPT. It's so amazing to think about how far they have come in just a few short years. But it doesn't stop there. There are also rumors about GPT-4 having a hundred trillion parameters. Can you even imagine what we'll be able to do with that kind of power? This January, Microsoft announced a 10 billion investment in OpenAI, which makes the company potentially valued at 29 billion dollars. Microsoft also announced integrating ChatGPT into Microsoft Bing, Edge, 365, and other products. As a user, I am super excited about OpenAI's extraordinary development and the potential benefits it brings to humanity. I also have so many questions. What's next for OpenAI? Will OpenAI stay open, or is it on the path to become closed AI? Will we see AGI soon? Let's hope that OpenAI stays true to its mission and brings us closer to achieving artificial general intelligence that benefits humanity.